Hey there, how's it going everybody? Dan here with PlantAbundance.com. Today I'm going to be doing another DIY project. I went ahead and picked up this 350 pound cast iron bathtub with plans to convert it into a vermicomposting system. And I'm happy to report the project is now complete. I'm very happy with the results. So I'm going to go ahead and share with you exactly how it is I put this system together. So if you're not yet familiar, vermicomposting is the farming of worms. It's composting down food scraps, coffee grinds, newspaper, different items that most people are going to have around their house on a regular basis. And filtering that through your worms, creating a really rich organic worm casting, which is their feces, which is a very high quality garden fertilizer. It could be used to make compost tea. And this is just a great system, a great way to keep many biodegradable items out of our local landfills and instead return these items back to the soils to enrich our plants. So like I had mentioned, this bathtub is cast iron, 350 pounds. This project here is not gonna be for everybody. The reason why I chose the bathtub and everything else that was used to make this project is because there were free local resources. So I'd encourage anybody out there watching who may be looking to create a similar type bin, look into whatever resources might be available in your area. These bins can be created out of many different types of materials. My first worm bin was made using 32 gallon storage totes and that worked great. It's all about just really understanding the worm's life cycle and how to create a really balanced ecosystem within the bin. So with that being said, there's a lot of other examples of bathtub worm bins out there. I got a lot of great information online and now I just wanna to help to contribute to that overall base of knowledge and share with you how it is I put my own spin on this project. So most tubs are gonna have a pre-installed slope within the tub. So even when you install the tub level, on whatever stand you choose, it's gonna easily flow that liquid towards and out the drain, as was the case with this setup. So as you can see, I used cinder blocks to build the stand for this tub. Again, chose this material as a free local resource. It's robust enough to hold up this 350 pound tub. And aesthetically, I kinda of like the way it looks as well. The next step is gonna to be to go ahead and put a layer of rock on the bottom of the tub. This is gonna help with drainage and again, help with the worm leachate that is gonna be flowing out of here that's also a valuable resource that we wanna collect. So for that, I'll be using these larger river rocks. I've seen this done with pea gravel, three quarter inch rock, but this is what I got on hand and this will work just fine. This tub ended up requiring three five gallon buckets full of this river rock. So now that I got the rock nice and clean and verified again, everything's draining properly. Just wanna share with you, this is the bucket I'll be using to collect that leachate. This is a two gallon square bucket. Uh, we'll see how that goes. I'll be updating you in the future and let you know if this is adequate and how often I've got to empty this bucket out uh, in a system of this size. All right, so moving along, I'm gonna be using this trampoline as a mesh layer. This is gonna help to separate the compost and the worms from the drainage rock, helping to keep the worms contained and the system functioning properly. I've seen this step also completed using window screen and landscape fabric. But again, here's another free local resource. I've actually already used this in a previous project here, so I had it on hand as well. And it's a very strong material and it drains very well. So this will do a great job in this worm bin. So after giving the trampoline a quick wash, you can see this is how I've gone ahead and laid it into the tub. By having one large crease when laying it in, because the trampoline itself is rather large, that's gonna help you to avoid having wrinkles all along the edge of the tub. It just creates a better surface for your lid and also looks better aesthetically. So now that the trampoline's in, the next step is to fill it with the worm bedding of your choice. I've chosen to go with this cocoa core or cocoa fiber. This is a very popular choice in vermicomposting. Uh, one important thing to note if you do choose to go with the cocoa core is to make sure that it's been deemed safe for use in vermicomposting. Cocoa core is high in salt and requires a double rinsing process to ensure that it's not going to be detrimental in any way to the bin. I'll put a link below this video if you want to see the product I'm using. I got this off of Amazon, free prime shipping. Now I chose to use the cocoa core for the worm bedding because I've used this stuff in other gardening projects in the past and I know it creates a great balance of moisture to oxygen which is great for a worm bin. It's soft, it's fluffy and it's also organic. And over time, these worms are going to actually be eating this and breaking it down and turning it into worm castings, which makes an excellent fertilizer for the garden, which is why we're doing all this. So to hydrate this 11 pound block of cocoa core, all you do is add five gallons of water, give it a few minutes, then go ahead and blend it up with your shovel. Now we're ready to go ahead and backfill into the worm composting bin. As you can see, one 11 pound block was the perfect amount for this project. I'm still about six inches from the top, which is gonna allow me the room to add in some food scraps as well as a brown layer on the top. 
All right, so moving right along, here's the worms that I purchased. I got 2,000 worms, and roughly 1,000 worms is about a pound. And that's important to know because these red wigglers, they actually eat half their body weight each day. So my 2,000 worms here are gonna require approximately about a pound of food a day. So here's how the order arrived. The worms look nice and alive. So some people might not know this, but not all worms are created equal when it comes to a worm composting bin setup, and I'll share with you why. The most common worms that you'll find around your house, if you dig a shovel into the ground, turn over the soil, those are going to be what most people might call earthworms, which these red wigglers are also earthworms, but they're more of a night crawler, these larger, long, fat worms. And those worms were not designed, nor are they suitable for a worm bin type setup. They're actually soil dwellers, and they like to dwell several feet below the soil surface, so they'll actually die in a setup like this. Now the red wigglers, or the red worms as they're known, are surface dwellers, and they prefer to be somewhere within the top six inches of the soil. So they're perfect for a worm bin setup. All right, so next, I'm gonna add some food to this bin. Here's some examples of what I'll be putting into this bin on a regular basis. I've got some coffee grinds here with some vegetable scraps, a coffee filter. I've also got some green leafy material from the garden. Got some paper towels. As long as they're not too greasy and dirty, they're fine to throw into the bin, as is newspaper. I've got eggshells. Those need to be clean and crushed before you put them in. Ready materials, tortillas, rice, bread, those can all go into the bin as well. There are many things you want to avoid putting into the bin. Things like citrus, worms don't like to break down the citrus. But more importantly, things like meats, dairy, oil, all these things will create a rancid, rotten environment. They may attract in rats and things like that. And then atop that, it's a good idea to add a brown layer. This is going to help to reduce any possible smells that come out and also helping to darken the surface where the food is at and retain moisture. Once that's done, I went ahead and added this little cardboard slip. Again, just further securing that brown layer. And over time, that cardboard will also become moist and more pliable and act kind of as a skin to the whole system. So the last step, I went ahead and measured and then cut a piece of plywood as the finishing lid to this project. It also creates a pretty nice tabletop that can be functional that way. And I've even sat on this. Well, that's it for now, everybody. I'm really happy with the way this project turned out. Hope you enjoyed the video. And as always, I hope this video finds you and finds you well. Take care, everybody. I'll be talking to you again soon.